You're watching Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about snail mail, weird headgear, and we're revealing the location of this year's Escape Adulthood Summit. Salutations! This episode is brought to you by people like Barb, Jack Scorder, Green Hansen, and Katie Bischoff. Their membership in the Wonder Rooms of Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Thank you guys. Yes, if you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society, or just be among the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Indeed. Today's a big night, you it guys. It is a big night. and uh, Heather is right. I am... I do not keep secrets well. This has been, it's been rough. rough. It's been I have rough. been on like pins and needles all day, you guys, and I know the news. Um, so yes, we are soon going to be revealing the Escape at a Hood Summit location. But let's talk about the Super Bowl for a few minutes. Yeah, real quick, just uh, kick things off, asking people what their favorite uh, Super Bowl commercial was. And some people didn't watch any of the commercials. Some yes. people were busy doing other things. But we did get the. Uh, the E Trade uh, baby, the wilderness babies baby coming out of retirement. I, I, rem I, I remember that. those. That I was love a nice the talking babies. nostalgic piece. Wendy also mm -hmm. was with that. Um, yep. Julie liked the uh, Jonas, Jonas, yes. Jonas, uh, and Our, the Animal Jam session one. She we says. had to explain that to the kids as it was happening. But as soon as a Jonas brother pulled up, we're like, "That's yeah, keep it up with the Joneses." That was pretty funny. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, e Eugene Levy driving the car. Yeah, that was good. Nick oh, says that he should be a, be a national. Driver. I know. Uh, I, we love him. I too, think Nick. He, I think he's a Canadian, His long hair, a Canadian <laughs> national treasure. If I'm <laughs> if I'm correct, is he really? Uh, I believe so. Okay, I, I don't know. know that. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, here you go. This is the one you were you were enjoying. The one with yes. Meadow and AJ. The okay. Sopranos. The whole time I'm like, oh my gosh, are they having like a sequel? We were big Soprano fans. Probably we watched the DVDs. You know, we didn't have HBO, but we watched them later. Um, but we were kind of like, ooh, is this like a good announcement? That music was a good flashback. Yeah. So unfortunately, we'll there was no loaded. announcement, but um, it did get us kind of jamming a little bit. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, my favorite one was the. Uh, uh, Uber Eats advertising oh, yeah. that they deliver things other than things that was you eat. And funny. Yeah. Something about people eating like deodorant yes. and pencils. <laughs> you don't eat this. And, yeah. <laughs> you lie. Like that was that was pretty good. Uh, yeah, Julie also reminds me Barbie's Dream oh, House and Castle yes. Grayskull. That was really clever. We have the as same well. taste in commercials because that was classic. Uh, the Austin Powers one. Yeah. You know By the way, this that the Austin Powers reminds me that this was. The Super Bowl where Generation X finally got, we grew up. Now we're being marketed to. We are. And we, even though we're the smallest generation, and we're, we're just talking us, Generation X, whoever relates to that or on the edges, we were celebrated. Totally and, uh, brought out by the Super Bowl. Yes. Where all of the, the boomers were like, this is crap. <laughs> All of and the, that's okay. All that's, of we the, say that all the time about halftime. All of the millennials all are the like, time. who are these old people? <laughs> is this an AARP commercial? And all the all the Gen X are like, yes, finally. This is my whole something high I can relate to. College. I know, I know. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. That's all I gotta say about that. Uh, so it was it was pretty uh It was very interesting to see the Xers who often feel kind of forgotten. We're kind of the forgotten we're the sandwich gen generation. We're the right? forgotten generation. We kind of were shining bright uh that night. So it was fun. Yeah, it was sure. pretty good. Yeah. So um yeah, so we've got some some big news tonight, but uh, I wanted to kick things off uh with a segment we haven't done in a while where we show you a picture and then we ask you what's going on? All right. Okay, it's here been we go. While. Uh, it's oh, been a while. Uh, no. Dug this one off of uh, the internet. <laughs> oh, Have you heard of the internet? It's got <laughs> weird stuff. Uh, oh, what I what I love to, to do is just ask the question: What is going on? And uh, feel right. free to caption this. Put in the comments what you think is going on. I'm having kind of on. a visceral reaction, to be honest. 
Did you feel that way the first time? Uh, it was a little disturbing. Okay. A little dystopian. <laughs> um, There's got to be some reason for this. Whenever you combine... Um, I don't even want to say technology. I don't know what's uh, yeah surrealism. A little bit. Yep. Yes, Jennifer, thank you for the art word because I am uh, like having that. Is that not showing up in oh, the front. It's, it's oh, like... just gotta go down oh, okay. a little bit. There we All go. Right. On the fly. So what is going on? Uh, in this photo? <laughs> that's pretty... talking. Heads. That is Kim. so obvious, but so clever. I wish I would have thought of that. Talking nice heads. One. Very good. Yep. Um, er, er, uh, Ma Bell Super Bowl one commercial. <laughs> that's good. Uh, headphones. Good one, Lynn. Oh, good one. Nice. You guys are coming out in full effect tonight. They are good moods tonight. Uh, yep. Early Met Gala outfits. Nice. Yes, I could see. Uh, I could see AOC rocking one of these. Uh, first mobile phones. <laughs> By the way, seeing the cord is totally bringing me back. I kind of want to put it in my teeth. Did anybody else put it in your mouth when you were talking on the phone? No, that's I nasty. would chew on it. Yeah, that's, I know. Who's gross? <laughs> uh, who's not? I mean, I was a kid, so you got that going for you. But I don't think that's gross. Who's gross. not? Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, how about ET phone home? Oh, Good one. I nice. Like that. L. Nice. Uh, the, <laughs> that's not how you talk into the headset. <laughs> yeah. I mean, early they can't figure it out, right? That's how uh, our kids would be. How about early yeah. online dating? Oh, I like that. Like yeah. That. Nice one, Ron. How do you teleport? Mm, oh, good one. Yeah. Bad Halloween costumes. <laughs> Who's got the worst one? I think hey, the guy. Hey, a couple Aww. working on their communication. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that's how you and Darlene do it, right? And Stacy just is just foretelling our future, us being attached to our phones. Oh, yeah, really. What's the difference seriously? between then and now, really? There is uh, it's that. like just blue, early Bluetooth is what that is. Yeah. Uh, phony headspace. Uh, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bell went to a party. Uh, <laughs> Good one, Mary. Uh, uh, Jane says, yeah, the whole family chewed it, Kim. Even right? grosser. See? Even grosser. I, I, thank you for wow. helping me feel normal because I was like, did no one chew the cord? We totally yeah, did. I, that, that was, yes. Kim points out that. 120 feet of twist. That was the thing is how far you could stretch it. Yeah. Sometimes you really, really gave it everything it had. Do you remember where our wall phone was in our living room? Mm -hmm. Okay. That tells you how long ago we dated. Um, but I would sometimes stretch that almost to my bedroom. <laughs> oh my <God>. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a country mile, folks. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you did what uh, oh yeah, you did okay, for privacy, right? Uh, ringing headache. <laughs> how about this? Jill, good one. Can you hear me now? Talk about uh, Super Bowl commercials. These are good. You guys are on uh, it tonight. I'm see. very impressed. Ever have a cord stretch several yards? Yeah, several yes. backyards. It sounds like Kim's was. Well, we, did you also have like a closet nearby that you would go into for the privacy? Because we did the pantry, so yeah. people would it's sit in the pantry for hours. You know, it'd be like, uh, oh, she's yeah. breaking up with her boyfriend tonight. My older sister. You know, good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a commercial for Super Glue. Here you go. <laughs> This is one of the, like, some of those Super Bowl commercials, you don't even know what the heck it's for. Yeah, no. And then at the end, you're like, don't. oh, yeah, okay, I guess, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I want to know how many people did the QR code that was racing around the screen. I basically made Jason do it, because yeah. I'm like, what is that? What is that? Um, and Although it was difficult. It yeah. Was difficult to, it was, was like, it difficult slow for, down. I think they slow said down. that um, the, the site crashed, which mm. could have been part of it. Here's I, that was the whole Rotary point. Phone Club. Aww. So it's the Rotary Club. It's the Rotary Phone Club. Love that. Nice. And uh, um says we had a door to our upstairs mm. and could stretch the cord into the steps. That's like, all helpful. The way. You need that privacy. Yeah. I'm that's telling right. you. Yeah. Th this is bringing back some interesting Kelsey's memories. Kelsey's wondering about the the QR code. That was uh, something to do with Bitcoin. It was a, good it was for a, you, Kelsey. It was a, or, uh, I... Crypto. It was a crypto ad. I knew we shouldn't have done it, but I was so curious. I'm like, click it, click it. Got me. <laughs> yeah. Dorothy uh, commenting uh, as if no one could hear us in the closet. Or with <laughs> that, when you would the, like sneak, how many people would sneak and listen in, from another oh, room? Yeah, there's always something. Right? You could tell the air disturbance. I know. There's something going like, on there. Someone's on the phone. Get on the phone. We would totally uh, do that with my sisters and her boyfriends because that was, you just, it's just good entertainment. Yeah. You know? yeah. Kim says hey, it was a, a big deal when I got a princess phone for my room as a teenager. Oh. Yes. Now, how did that work in yes. your house? Because you had uh, four girls. And you, four you probably girls. just had the one phone before well, you got... Well, 
No, so being the youngest, I did benefit from the paving of the way. So by the time I got to be a teenager, it was kind of protocol to have a phone in our room. Yeah, so, but it was still one line, right? Oh, yeah. So one line, but we had call that. waiting at that point. Oh, yeah. So that, you just but then you just ignore. Ignore. I didn't hear any beep. I didn't hear a beep. Remember that whole thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I so, didn't hear it. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Phone and, drama. Uh, Kim, some of, some of you will remember what Kim's talking about with the... Uh, uh, party lines. My, my mom talks Old about the party, party lines. Had, they shared a line. Yeah. Out in uh, the Shannon, country. the art of snooping is a key skill right. of childhood. There was you're, a way to touch, wrong. to hold it and then release it really quietly. And then you just had to hope that, that no loud noises, right? Yeah. Did you do that? Oh, uh, I'm sure I have. Yeah. I, I, I think I had it done to me more often than I did it. but. <laughs> Because you're the gonna, oldest. So. I'm not going to pretend like I was innocent. In that, I feel uh, like that when war. we were early dating, I, we would catch people listening on our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Your brothers. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, this is fun. What yeah, a memory was, lane this uh, went. Yeah. It was not a party on the party lane. <laughs> someone who was there. Um, uh, okay. Well, uh, I guess now is a Julie, good... Julie, <laughs> my mom is a platinum medalist. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. Uh, this pretty is, good. This is good. All right, you guys. Well, you guys brought it. We've got a fun uh, giveaway question at the end uh, that I think is going to bring back some good memories. So stick around for that. And I've got a fun little monologue. But first, we've got some news to get to. And now, a word from our sponsors. Ah, you guys, <laughs> finally, a whole week of waiting. Ugh. As you know, we were super, super mean last week, and we just gave you the dates only. Mm. Was that terrible, I, or was it fun to anticipate? I'd love to find out. I know Jane wasn't happy about it. Which I, one? Because it was not uh, fun for me. But, you know, anticipation is a gift, so there is that. Uh, yes. So, okay, August 1st and 2nd, a Monday and Tuesday, which is really not that long from now, by the way. Uh, it's no, it's not. Speaking of. It's, no, it's not. And we uh, do, we kind of figured it would be kind of fun to have some special guests tonight share the news. Yeah, I think that's a good way to do it. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn it over for an important reason, yes, right? Yes. Because why are we letting them tell us? Well, uh, we're going to, as you'll see, these special guests um, are going to reveal the 2022 location for the Escape Adulthood Summit. They are actually going to be attending. Um, the summit, which is a first time for two out of three of them. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll just let them take it from here. All right. Hello, Kotaki kids. Hello. Is it true that you'll be joining us for the summit this year? Yes. Yes. All three of you? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Are you ready to get on a plane? Yes. Yes. Okay, where in the world will the 2022 Escape Adulthood Summit B, Ro, what do you think? Oh, we are getting on a plane. We're going west? Where is it, Lucy? It is at High Star Ranch, just 16 miles away from Park City, Utah. Park City, Utah. Ben's got the map. Look at that. See the red, the red drop there for at DeJoria Center at High Star Ranch. 16 miles from Park City, Utah. Are you ready for an adventure? Yes. Yes. And who should join us? Everybody. (laughs) We'll see you there. Well, there we go. We're going to Utah. Can you believe I've only been in the Salt Lake City airport. I have not Hmm. been outside of the airport, which you've been there. Yes, I've actually spoken in Park City and I've been out there. It's it's anyone who knows it's gorgeous. Um, this place, this is a uh, this is a shot of uh, the DeJoria the Center, which is mm-hmm. one of the top event centers in Utah. Jody's on. I was so excited uh, <laughs> to tell you, Jody. You and Tom. I mean, Jody and Tom live very close to here. So, um, yes, this is a pretty beautiful place. Mm-hmm. How do you even explain it? Well, like uh, Lucy said, it's on a ranch, so there are horses and just beautiful. It's in the foothills of the. Uh, do you remember the name Uida? of the Uida? Uida Mountains. Mountains. And it's the one of the only east-west mountain ranges. Yes. In the United States, my contact States, right? told me that it is the only east-west mountain range in the United States. U- Uida Mountains, and maybe I'm saying that wrong, but um, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, 
not only is it a working ranch, so they have horses for horse trail rides, but they also have a lot of other adventure type um, opportunities at this outfitter that is on site. So they have mountain bike trails, which is quite extensive, by the mm -hmm. way. Lots of different, you know, beginner, medium, uh, advanced my, mountain bike trails. There's some hunting opportunities, fishing, um, tons of trails. So all of our fellow wonder hunters, get your, your iPhones or your phones charged up. Um, but yeah, of course, Park City. Hello. I mean, if you've been watching the Olympics for the last week and a half, you've heard that a thousand times. Yeah. So Jody, I think she spelled that out for us. Uinta. Oh, Uinta. The, the okay. Not you Ida. Okay. Uinta. Mm -hmm. It's the mountain range. So thank you, Jody, for that. Yeah. So it is gorgeous. So that you can see there, the um, the uh, place on the right is where we'll be. Spending a lot of our time uh, for the indoors and, and some meals. But then there's that barn over there right under the logo of the Escape at Elite Summit logo. We've got something fun planned for that. I cannot even tell you. We've got uh, a special guest. We'll reveal uh, a special guest eventually. Yes. Um, we got to nail some He or down. she. Yep. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's going to be off the hook. As you know, like last year when we had it in Sheboygan, we had uh, Eddie Carosa Jr. who was... Uh, a polka player who yes. was actually in Home Alone, right? And uh, was very big in Sheboygan, and that he brought the house down with his uh, polka band. Yes, he did. And we're doing something different this year. We always do something different. We have we have a very similar structure to the summit, but we add all kinds of different magic. We we add all kinds of different surprises and and and, and fun things. And we felt like this was a, a good time to take the next step. Every single Escape at All Hood Summit has been held in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, until now, and we decided that we're gonna we're gonna give this a whirl and uh, go somewhere new, and it's a little bit more logistics, but I think we're ready for it, and we're very excited about it, and uh, excited to see who will be able to uh, to join us. But it'll be there was a, a little foreshadowing to us even, so we were expecting it to be in Wisconsin this year, but at the end of the last summit, uh, there was a group of us kind of hanging out when we were kind of cleaning up and we're all kind of just dreaming together. Like, wouldn't it be fun to take this on the road and where would we go? And there was all sorts of cool ideas being thrown around. So this is just the beginning. You guys We're really excited about destination locations for the escape little hood summit to really bring that escape part that we, you know, we've been a little held back in the past because of the ages of our kids and the logistics of all that. And as you can see, they are just as excited as us to be on this adventure, um, and they're ready to do it. So yeah. I think it's new new uh, waters, right? For sure. A couple of questions here. Uh, Kim is asking nearest yes. airport. So the nearest airport is Salt Lake City. That was one of the reasons we Huge chose hub. this location, yeah. is it's a very easy airport to get into from a lot of different places. So hopefully that will help out um, for convenience. We had some other ones we're looking at that we may do in, do in the future, but they're a little they're bit a little more tougher. remote. So that is one advantage that we bring to the table is that Jason has been traveling professionally for 15 or 16 years at least. So we do have that little uh, expertise of travel savvy that we bring to the table. So Salt Lake City and Kim, knowing that you could fly out of Madison, Salt Lake City is a huge Delta hub. So Oftentimes, well, she you, might be flying out of Florida. Who knows where yeah. you're going to be coming Miami, from? Maybe you'll drive. Orlando, I don't who knows? know. So, but my point is, Delta is a big hub through there, but it's an international airport. So, there's a lot of cool options. Kathleen is asking if you stay on site. No, they don't have any Question. lodging. The closest lodging is a uh, short 20 minute drive away. That's where Park, Park City is. So, Park yep. City is world famous and gorgeous and beautiful. Lots of shopping, lots of cool things to do. Um, and so there's a lot of different lodging options in Park City. There are also uh, state parks, camping, um, camping yes. available. So tons of verbo, um, lots of options Airbnb. for that. So we kind of wanted to let people do what they wanted to do based on your price range and your situation with people. So I'm excited to just have the freedom to have everybody do that. And in the sign up page, we'll have some recommendations, but. Um, but yeah, should we talk about that? When can they actually get their golden tickets? Well, golden tickets will go on sale this Sunday. However, um, if you are a member of the Wonder and Whimsy Society, or if you are an alumni of the summit, if you've been to a summit before, uh, check your mailboxes because probably tomorrow morning you will receive an email. You get a little bit of a head start um, to grab your tickets. Um, 
we don't there it's a limited number like always mm -hmm. it, we're, yeah. we're hoping to grow it a little bit but uh, we still have a pretty limited amount of tickets available so if you're interested I wouldn't wait too long uh, I can't make any promises of how long they'll last but um, you'll have a few day day a few uh, few uh, days head start um, if you have uh, if you've been to a summit before, mm -hmm. um, or if you're a Wonder Whimsy member. So we sent out emails to you guys. We will probably have the page up tonight so that you can see more pictures and see a little bit more, have some of your other questions answered. Um, the registration link will not be live until Sunday. Yes. So if you are uh, an Escape It All Hood insider, we'll be sending that out Sunday morning with the, uh, with the regular Corey. insider. <laughs> There's a, it's fun reading your comments, guys. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Yeah. It's it's been a interesting couple of weeks, you know, just getting to this new revelation and figuring out all the details and contracts and all that good stuff. <laughs> so this is the payoff because it's it's been a long run getting here. Um, another th quick thing to mention is Wonder and Whimsy Society members. If you're if you're already starting to like look at you know oh what dates should I take off and all that we mentioned this last week, but please know that something new we're doing this year is Wonder and Whimsy Wednesday. So Monday and Tuesday are the summit. If you are a Wonder and Whimsy Society member, you're invited to stick around on Wednesday for Wonder and Whimsy Wednesday, which will be just a really specialized um, opportunity for members only to hang out, mastermind. We're going to have some fun um, ranch activities that we'll be doing. And all of that information will be sent to you once you get your golden ticket, if you're a Wonder Whimsy member. So, um, just mark the dates down, mm -hmm. you know, if you're starting to, tr you know, plan out what days you'll travel, um, and you can, you know, swing it, please make time for that because it's going to be pretty intimate and, um, exclusive. Yes. So, so uh, thank you for, right uh, thank you for all of the great, uh, enthusiasm I see in the, the, chat the comments here it's yes. really great to see uh I, i'm excited because uh as you know i wrote a book called the chance of awesome and one of the biggest questions in there is now that this has happened what does this make possible and we've used that a lot over the pandemic yeah. um to turn a negative into a positive but i gotta tell you uh i don't see this as a negative at all i see this as, as another way to look at this question of like now that we're getting out of our normal tried and true routine what new things like what does being in utah what does flying to an event make possible that maybe wasn't possible before so we have a lot of uh a lot of things we're excited about a lot of magic we're already planning and the team is excited and um nick, uh, let's see what is nick's yes, got, got to say i'm there regardless excited. if work doesn't cover it but the Texas crew has already said they want to be in. Uh, I was biting my tongue, Nick, because you said, oh, what about Wisconsin Summers? Well, uh, you know, and Jody could jump in. I'm sure Tom can jump in. Apparently in the foothills of these beautiful mountains in August, early August is a wonderful time to be there. Gorgeous. Um, the guy that I talked to said he doesn't even own air conditioning. So he's like, it gets a little warm, you know, in, in the early afternoon, but it's beautiful. 70s, 80s. Um, it'll be a perfect opportunity to take that break from the Texas humidity, as you had said. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, more details to come, but uh, make sure you're subscribed uh, as a Adult Itis Fighter Insider. And uh, if you are an alumni or a Wonder and Whimsy member, keep an eye on your email inbox. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. A stamp is a miracle. For just 58 cents, someone will come to your house to collect a letter you've written and hand deliver it to the house of someone else anywhere in the country. Heck, back in the old days, you had to be royalty with great wealth and servants at your beck and call if you wanted a personal message delivered to someone in your kingdom. Even now, if you lived in Miami, how much time, money, and effort would it take you to hand deliver a birthday card to a friend in Seattle. Depending on whether you took a plane or a car, and if you had any overnight stays involved, it might cost you $1,000 or more. Instead, a mailman will do it for the tidy sum of 58 cents. And you can stay on your couch in your pajamas, polishing off a pint of chubby hubby. It's miraculous. It makes me wonder why we don't avail ourselves of this magic more often.
Because perhaps the best part of the whole thing is receiving a real greeting card or a handwritten letter from somebody else. You have a permanent record of someone's inner thoughts and a relic of them in the form of their own handwriting, their unique signature. They, if you think about it, they had to lick the envelope, they affixed the stamp. It's like a little craft project made just for you. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary because it's rare. We don't do snail mail much anymore. It takes too long. Email or text is quicker. In this harried world, there's something special knowing that someone had to hit pause on their day on purpose to complete a physical action that took longer than pounding out a few keystrokes on their laptop. That's the coolest part. The indisputable fact that they were thinking of you. You mattered to them. And they gave someone very specific instructions to deliver that message directly to you as quickly as possible, all for 58 cents. Now, this isn't an advertisement for the Postal Service, although they do have some amazing people in their ranks. It's a reminder that there are miracles all around us. If you can't see them, you're not paying attention. I hope this inspires you to send a miracle to someone today. So I'm really curious if we're going to get some comments about how much a stamp was when they were kids. <laughs> right? Because I remember a little bit. I mean, I'm trying to think. I think they were at least five or ten cents. Like, Oh, I don't I don't know if that was in your no? childhood. Okay. No? Okay. Definitely okay. quarter for sure. Well, that's true. Maybe they were quarters. But yeah. it, it is when I, maybe I'm thinking of the ten cent stamp, which is its own thing. Yeah. But that's um, just it. It's like that. it's doubled at least in my lifetime. Right. But it's, it's still a freaking deal. Yeah. Right. It's it like a personal it. servant. Like, yeah. here, servant. <laughs> take this, take this letter to my friend in Santa Barbara. Right. right. Like, just it's crazy. And again, uh, I recently had a birthday and had a number of really nice birthday cards mm -hmm. from family, but also from some of you in this very community. It was very yeah, it was touching very nice. and heartwarming. Yeah. And again, to think like you had to take time out of your day to write stuff down, to buy a card, to write stuff down, to seal it up, put a stamp on it, get the address, put it in your mailbox. And then all of the stuff that happens, I think yeah. it's one of those things like we, we totally take for granted the uh, amazing things uh, in our life every single day of our, of our world, of our society. Systems, right? So easy to uh, get bogged down with negativity by all of the the negative things, the things that are going wrong in our world or our community. That those other things are pretty easy to uh, to miss and take for granted. So. I'm with Kathleen. I don't pay attention to stamp prices, um, so it, it was like, wow, they're 58 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I had that. I had to look too. it up. Yeah, <laughs> like I just you buy a sheet, right? Yeah, it's like um, I know the sheet costs quite a bit, but I don't even know how many stamps are on there. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think now is a good time uh, to uh, grab your pens, pencils, crayons, stuff to draw with. Let's draw, you guys. <laughs> Week two, baby. All right, this is the part of the show where if you've never joined us before, we invite you to draw along with us. Uh, it's sort of like a combination of Willy Wonka meets Bob Ross, where we draw really sometimes weird, fun stuff step by step. So even if you don't think you're an artist, you might be surprised if you take it step by step with us. So let's start out, uh, first of all, with a couple of uh, horizontal lines towards the top of our paper. And the top one is going to be shorter. The bottom one is going to be a little bit longer, like that. OK, now we're going to, uh, to connect those lines as such. Here we go. Trapezoid. Trapezoid, there we go. We've got a little mm -hmm. math geometry lesson here, too. OK, underneath this trapezoid, we're going to draw a, uh, a circle with the top part is going to be be hidden. So it'll look a little bit like this. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from the edge of this circle, just kind of like that. 
I've got some good guesses here so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what we're going to do, uh, it does look, Kelsey says it looks like a lamp. Ah. It does. All right. Now where we, where we started to draw that other line sticking out, we're going to go on the inside and we're going to draw a little uh, fun loop-de-loop. -loop. This is like my favorite part here. All right. That was fun. Yeah, fun, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to draw a little uh, little curvy line that connects right there. Okay. And then we're going to draw a, a little, oh, here we go. A I, bump I mean, out. A bump out. Yes. Yeah, we're going to draw a little bump out right there. <laughs> we got to have a little, I, I, please have a little <laughs> my, definition of my bump glossary. out one of these days. I know. That's All right, good. now we're going to draw, uh, well, I don't even know how to describe it, but once we draw it, just follow along. It's a little curvy line and then connect it back up oh, there. Wow. Okay. And it's okay if it's a little wiggly because we're drawing something that's wiggly, okay. right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to draw some little uh, little antennas up here. Two little lines with little circles at the top. Okay. okay. And then uh, let's draw in the middle of this uh, trapezoid. We're going to draw a heart and a line from the upper corner to the heart and from the upper corner on the other side to the heart. And we've got a little little letter there that is uh, sealed with a little little heart. And then we've we got to put a little smile on this guy, a little face. I'm going to make mine look like that. And uh, I'm actually gonna, oops, am I? There we go, <laughs> I'm gonna move this down a little bit more. In the oh, I wish I could just move mine down. Yeah, well. Sharpie. Yours looks good. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna color it in. Now this is, this is where I expect to get some creativity involved color. here. Okay. And uh, I've, as always, we love to, um, Let's see what color do I want to do. We love to get your submissions. I love to see people's versions. We had quite a few last week. Uh, we did. Yes. I bet it was hard to choose. It was. Yeah. I've got, I've got some good ones. So I'm going to go with a little bit more of a traditional uh, coloring, but I fully expect that some people will have some fun with the colors. I know that our daughter, Virginia, certainly would. Oh, yes. And good job guessing tonight. I feel like you guys got it really early tonight. So I, they're yeah. savvy, yeah. I tell you. Yeah, good. I know. Um, I love, too, some of the people that send in their um, their things, their drawings, uh, date them so I can tell that mm -hmm. they have, like, a little journal, kind of like you have going on. I know. Account. This is brand new, you guys. If you weren't here last week, I'm... I'm finally starting at show 81 to draw along. So let's see if I can kind of show you what I did last week. Oop, oop, camera. My little snowman last week. And I'm, I'm working on my little snail there. Um, I really don't like how the Sharpie goes through the paper. So that's yeah. a little problem for me. But I'll have to just let that go. That'll be a little fighting. It's like you're going to have moment. to. Because yeah. <laughs> right. I like the look of the Sharpie. So, you know. So let me give you a couple little extra uh, fun artsy Ooh, yes. tips here to make it um, next level. Okay. So one thing we can do, we've got this uh, envelope on top of the snail. And uh, to give it a little bit of di dimension is to put a little shadow under it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a kind of a curved shadow like this. And you can see there that it follows the curve of the snail itself and gives it a little... Um, Mm -hmm. that, that feel like it's it's curving over or it's a it's sitting on top of this curved thing um, another fun thing you can do again this is depending on what media you have so um, sometimes I work when, I, when I'm working right now with procreate I'm basically working dark to light so I have dark colors and then sometimes I can work light or I can go dark if you're using crayons or marker sometimes you can only go light to dark you can't usually do light over the top of it so you might just have to switch things around right so you could obviously shade the um the shadow i just did but in this case i'm going to draw some 
um, make this guy look a little slimy. Ooh. And you might wonder how I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it look slimy and textured at the same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get this a little bit lighter so you can see. So I'm just going to draw little dots um, by the top. So it gives us a sense of light striking it, but a little bit of that slimy, wet snail yeah. vibe. Okay. And then what I might do as well is then do the same thing using the dots, but a darker color and do that on the shadow side like this. And it might be a little bit darker than I want to go. That's go. cool. That really adds to it. So it gives it that little, uh, that little bumpy, or not really scaly, but you know the texture I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? Yeah, yeah. And then of course you can have all kinds of fun with the uh, the the shell itself. I might make some little uh, little lines going around just to give it a little bit more uh, definition and interest. Um, I like how you've got some some good colors going in there, Kim. Thank you. And I'm getting some good tips in the comments. Thank you, thank you guys about the Sharpie thing. Um, Paul said, when I try gel pens, which hello, that mm. was a great excuse to buy that some gel pens. Or a thinner Sharpie, mm -hmm. which is good. So All there's right, my little show guy. What you got there. Yeah, it's kind of it's fun. Good work. I like that. I do like using the crayons, I will say, because of the of the smell. The smell mm -hmm. is you can't beat the smell. So yep. Uh, again, I want to uh, to see what you guys come up with. Of course, you can email that to kj at escapeadulthood.com, and I would love to see Carousel. your creations this week. I'd love to see your your mail snail, as your I'm calling it, <laughs> mail snail. Mail snail, yeah. Uh, you like that? That's perfect. Yeah. All right, so last week, of course, we got a, a, a batch of them, and we had a few from uh, a couple shows back. We had the uh, the fun, happy key lime pie. Oh my so gosh. Kara uh, did this one. I, I think she it. admitted in the email that she was supposed to be working when she drew this, but uh, you know that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're Elle, not judging. We're not judging. Great job, Al. Love the coloring of this here. Good He's job. Got cute little depth. That the little guy. Little crumbs coming down. It's good. Mm -hmm. like Looks it. like that lime's got some sunglasses too. Some Aww. shades. So I like that. And then uh, last week, what did we draw? We drew uh, the Scram oh, yes. Winter Snowman, Tropical Snowman. And Helen weighed in last week. She got this great with the the umbrella. I love the umbrella I know. touch. It kind of reminds me little, of a uh, drink umbrella. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I love the straw hat. I love the palm trees. She little took it next level. Penguin in the little background. Little sand castle. I mean, she mm -hmm. pretty good, pretty stellar effort there. And then right. uh, Jennifer Tackett uh, had a really nice uh, super tropical. Cute. I love that little beret. I it's know. pretty good. Peace, love, and happy trees from, <laughs> from Jennifer. And uh, got a bunch of other ones, so we'll we'll so keep sure. sharing the so ones cute. we got. Um, thank you for submitting those. Please, if you drew with us tonight, um, send it in. Send it in to kj at escapeitallhood.com. Even if it's even if you're watching a rerun, you never know. Send yeah. it in. We might we might show a bat blast from the past. I'd love to see. I always love to see what you guys draw. So uh, great job, one and all. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and now it's time for some adult itis fighters to uh, to get riled up. All right. See you night. Okay, theme oh. of the week. I don't know where this came from, but I saw it in our photo feed and I loved it. I put it on the lead. Fun tip. I put it in the parenting tip. <laughs> don't throw out those doll heads. You can turn them into handy nightlights for your kids. I totally freaked everybody out. I was like, I am joking, you guys. This is really a joke, but it is pretty epic. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't, doesn't have, have to. to. No. Uh, it just depends how much you like sleep yourself because those kids are not going to get Kara. a wink of it. No! Not going to get a wink of it. So uh, this week I am uh, very excited to um, uh, highlight our February Adultitis Fighter uh, of the Month. None other than Jennifer Tackett. So uh, well deserved. She was oh, the one Jennifer. who we just saw her wonderful Let's Draw. And the post just went up um, today. Just got the post Sweet. up on our website. I so if you go to escapeitallhood.com, check out the blog, you'll see it. Uh, and Jennifer will be getting a prize package in the mail very soon, including 
a little teeny tiny original canvas mm -hmm. that I painted of a little adultitis fighter slingshot. So yes. that's that's on its way. Uh, it's Jennifer, so teeny tiny. Well, it's like three inches by three <laughs> inches, so it's, it's not quite postage stamp, but it's close. Right. Uh, but it was hand painted. Yeah. Um, so we always ask our adultitis fighters of the month. Now Jennifer has been in our community for maybe a year and a half now. I think yeah. she's she's fairly new, yeah. and she's already established herself as a solid, solid member of this tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a Wonder and Whimsy Society member. She is a big supporter and encourager of many people <coughs> in our community, and she's an art therapist as well. So um, she gets to do that encouraging thing. Uh, all the time. And she's one of the reasons that she's a part of this community and especially the Wonder and Whimsy Society. Excuse myself so I can cry. Is to, uh, is to uh, take care of herself, uh, self care, which is uh, one of the best reasons that you can be a part of it. Because I think uh, this community attracts a lot of people who are givers and people who care about other people. And sometimes uh, those kinds of people are the worst at taking care of themselves. And so um, she's a great encourager of that for a lot of people. And uh, we always ask uh, our adultitis fighters some questions. And I wanted to point out a few uh, points that Jennifer shared that were pretty cool. We asked, like, who has been the greatest influence in your own fight against adultitis? Hey, welcome back. Hey, thanks. Uh, Sorry about that. She says, my maternal grandparents told me to never give up on my artistic side. I took that to heart. I think owning your uniqueness is a strength. It has been a journey and process to get there, but I love it. And yeah, it is because we're kind of, uh, our weirdness is often uh, shamed out of us as we grow up. So being yeah. able to hold on to it is a tricky, tricky business. Mm -hmm. uh, what's something you love doing as a child and still do in some form today? She says, of course, art, but there are more things. I love going to the lake as a kid with my parents and extended family. The smell of the bonfire. You all just smelt it, didn't you? Uh, one of the first, uh, the making of s'mores and campfire goodies takes me right back to childhood. Mm -hmm. One of the first things we did was put a fire pit in the backyard at our current house. I love sharing this with our daughter, Riley. Um, I got a good picture here. She likes uh. dressing up. Uh, and I, I'm going to show. There's one more I got to show you. And I, I want to awesome. show it in a second. Um, how about a strategy for um, like advice? What advice do you have for someone who is feeling overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. By adult types. I'm sure that's, that's anyone hard for anyone to, to relate to, I bet. She has some good <laughs> advice. She says, baby steps. Change and healing takes time. Mm. We did not get here just yesterday. Celebrate and advocate for yourself. You deserve it. Take time to play today, even if it's just for a few moments. Good vibes to all. Peace, love, and happy trees. Aww. And uh, that's fitting because this is Aww. her Aww. Halloween costume. And no, that's not Bob Ross. <laughs> that is Jennifer uh, with, with her palette. husband and daughter. Aww. And she has a, she's a dead ringer, I'd say. She's got, you've got the beard going. That's the legit. perfect shirt. That is like one of my favorite pictures of all time. If that is not top five Halloween costumes you've ever I seen, I will fight you. I don't think that's the case. Um, so thank you, Jennifer, for being a part of this uh, community, for being such a, uh, uh, yeah, Kathleen Kathleen says, that's all? She's just been here. I know. She was such a lifer. Yeah, that's just it. That's how solid she is. And that one of her uh, big lines uh, is family we choose. And that is, uh, that's, that's a big one because we have a lot of people who, are in this community who are surrounded kind of like on an island. They're surrounded by people who are always trying to tell them to grow up, to be serious, to not be so silly. And um, there's a lot of those around. And so that's part of what this place is, is, is an oasis uh, for people who are feeling like that. So we're glad to be able to to uh, to have that. We're glad to have you in this uh, tribe, Jennifer. Jennifer, I, one thing I have to say about Jennifer is that she not only receives from the community, but she continues to give and give and give and keep, you know, encouraging everyone. So Jennifer, thank you for all that you give to all of us. Um, and we're grateful. I know, I know that there are a lot of recipients of the love and encouragement that you put out there, whether it's through the league, here on the show every week, in social media, Facebook world, everything, but, um, and of course in person, uh, as well. So thank you for all that you do for all of us adultitis fighters. Absolutely. And yeah. speaking of giving, we've got a giveaway. Oh boy.
Okay, so uh, right. we Hyped had... to this up. Well, you know, it's a little different. We had a lot of fun with the What's Going On segment. It's brought a lot of laughs. This one is a, might be a little bit more nostalgic. Uh, uh, we haven't had one of these in a while. Sweet, so maybe? There might be some humor in here, but it, it, okay. it, it, it was kind of like a, a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Um, so what is the most memorable thing you've ever received by mail? Ooh. And I had two things that came oh, to I mind for me. immediately. So... Uh, yes, uh, the giveaway is a comfy gift card, ten dollars <laughs> to the Escape It All Hood Lemonade Stand. Uh, just enter your your answer in the comments here. So probably For those won't of you be... who hear us joke about that, so that goes back a little throwback to our son Ben when we got these in the mail. He's like, "Wow, this is really comfortable," because it really is a very it soft is. card. It's a very soft yeah. finish. <laughs> Uh, so for me, there were two. There, you know, like back in the day, you would save up little cereal box, yeah, UPC codes, and then you Nailed could send in. them in. And I got mm -hmm. the yeah. Emperor Palpatine, Palpatine, however you want to say it, um, Star Wars figure, they which at the out. time was the only way you could Toys? get it. Oh my goodness! Um, and you know, it was one of those things. I don't know it was like five bucks and six things, and oh. you you had to wait weeks and weeks and weeks. But that was. A happy day when that time came. Wow. And then another That's thing legit. I remember getting in, I think, second or third grade, we did a project where we, as a class, we released balloons into oh, the sky with yeah. a little note on it with our home home address. It's kind of weird. <laughs> um, and so we just let them go. Right now, but yeah. And uh, months after, I received a thing in the mail. Actually, it might have gone to the school now that I think about it. They might have just had the... the That's probably safer uh, <laughs> to have the address of the school. But it was... Uh, the torn on like the the label that was on my balloon, it was all beat up. You still have it. Uh, I think I do you still have it me. somewhere. Yeah. And uh, it came with a letter that a guy found it on Lake Michigan. Now that I think about it, that's oh, pretty that's kind of a weird neat. thing. Yeah. Um, and sent it back, and you could only see. I think it was like Jason Kota. K-O-T-E, like the rest of it was kind of like faded off or whatever. Hmm. Um, so that was kind of a cool. A cool thing that I remember getting. How about you? Yeah, what did so you get in the mail? That was cool. What I got in the mail was almost 27 years ago to the day. I would say maybe like three weeks ago, 27 years ago. I got five letters in the the mail. Um, and I could kind of tell by the outside you know of them. You know, you know what this is? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I could tell by the outside that, there, that it was something very unique. I opened them up and each one was a, a note card, like an index card, and had a word illustrated with colored pencils on it. And so I opened them all up, I put them on the table, and then I had to arrange them into the message that it was, and it spelled out, will you be my Valentine? And uh, it was from this guy, Asking me out on our first date, which yeah, baby, yeah. Had on Valentine's Day. Our first date was on Valentine's Day. Many of you know we met Christmas caroling, so we met Christmas caroling in December. But it took till Valentine's Day for him to to ask uh, me out. You were still <laughs> dating someone. I had to off him first. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> but that was pretty neat. Now the funny part of that story is that he did send conversation hearts. Ill-advised. In the envelopes. So when I got them, the envelopes kind of had like holes in the bottom and there's like all these like powdery like things in there. I'm like, what is it's all this? It's a good thing it's like before stuff? the days of anthrax or, right. or whatever those uh Apparently powders. it didn't quite make it and they got all shredded up and broke the envelopes and whatnot. But did you say you kind of handpicked yeah, I, which ones yeah, you put in there? Yep. I'll me, never marry know. Marry me. I'll never could know have been, what could this is. <laughs> Kiss me. I'll never know what this. Yeah, is. baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's what see. what do we I, got here? I was peeking. There's some. Good All right. Ones Shannon in here. says, "When I worked for an aquarium, I got a giant octopus by FedEx." Once. Oh. Now that's, that's pretty good. It's gonna be hard to beat. That's a good story. Uh, but Dorothy got a cigarette. What? So there you go. <laughs> like one random cigarette. Oh, uh, there's gotta uh, there's be a story, a story there. It's a good one. Yes. Oh. Uh, Ron, uh, beach ball, fully inflated. What? I like that. That, was, that was a fun day for that someone. male person. Right? Um, Ron, awesome. my pencil that I ordered off the back of a cereal box. Mm, so some of us got yeah. Star Wars figures. Some of us got pencil. pencils. I hope it was a cool pencil. Uh, this one seems like a story. A tube of fire ants I was given for my 10th birthday, which I hated. Luckily, my birthday is in December, and they froze to death, so I was able to return the ant farm. What? Fire ants? 
Who Aren't gives people fire dangerous, ants? Isn't it? Uh, although it's, it's like a prank. Nick Nick might oh. might give people fire ants down in Texas. They have those yeah, down there, don't they? Yeah, I think they do. Uh, Cookie Crunch limited edition oh. Transformer had to collect a bunch of proof of purchases and then could not stand and stand the eight weeks for delivery. Oh, eight weeks. Yeah, that's what it was what back kind then. What companies were crazy. these that, that did that? That mailed these. Just like out. one old guy in I a know. back office. Uh, Kristen, I sent my niece a flip flop. Just one. What? Address written on the bottom of the flop. Yeah, that's the other cool yeah, thing about the, the mails. You can do stuff, stuff like that. I want to try that. Uh, it's pretty epic. Giordano's Pizza. That's what? pretty rad. I assume it was frozen, but I don't know. maybe it would be messy if that's it was awesome. messy. That'd be pretty good. Uh, ooh, a golden ticket. Yay. Mike Schroeder. Yes. Coming soon to a mailbox near you. Uh, Bald Eagle for the Raptor Center. Wow, they send those by mail, huh? That's pretty cool. Get that with the the octopus. I don't know that don't part of that, your history, Helen. That you worked at a Raptor Center. Last. Like, tell me more. Tell me more. Like, these are good conversation starters, right? Share in two bottles of port mm. called Jersey Devil from a former pen pal. Hey, that's mm, right up your like alley. That pal. would be fun. Yeah. Uh, let's awesome. see. Oh, a box of handcrafted Christmas ornaments and decorations Aww. that my grandma made. Aww. Sent after Aww. she passed. Wow. What? That's, how did she do that? I know. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, uh, Christie's also got ants for an ant farm. They didn't live very long. Oh. Uh, let's see. I, I think it's the fire ants that threw me with yes. the angel story. The are ants. all ants that are in ant farms fire see. ants? I don't know. Maybe right. they are. I don't know. When I first moved to Wisconsin as an adult, my dad made a box and shipped me a pumpkin because he always brought me pumpkins for oh. Halloween as a kid. That's sweet. I bet that cost something. That would be yeah, heavy. A good one. Bill Falsgraf, Jerry Rice autograph photo. Hey. That was another little hobby oh, I had. Oh, that was him too. Sending baseball cards and basketball cards out to uh, to professional players. I bet and, you and uh, Bill could share some stories. Speaking of Utah, I got uh, Carl Malone. He played for the Utah Jazz. He sent me back nice. a, uh, an autograph one time on a baseball or a basketball card. Do they still fun. do that? I don't know. Oh, probably not yeah. because of all the way they have to authenticize, uh, or what is that the right word? Authentic. It's uh, authenticate. Uh, authenticate signatures. Yeah. There's like a whole thing now. <laughs> Nick is offering to send anyone here some fire ants. <laughs> they are a staple here in Texas. I feel like we talked Rachel, about that at the last summit. I feel like we may have talked maybe about Rachel that. will send you her address so that she can finally get those back. Um, but then again, she didn't want them in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> we should all send Rachel fire ants. I think that's. That's the moral of today's story, and that's one to grow on. Uh, Paul got his college diploma because they got blanks during the ceremony. Oh, yeah. That, that is a thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. That's, that's a good one. I wonder if anyone's yeah. actually ever gotten a snail by mail. That would be... We should mail snails. That's pretty cool. To people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the next one in <laughs> Wednesday. I ordered a nine-foot garland and waited and waited and waited for it. Received it and wondered how it fit in such a small package... It was a 12-inch rope <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah, I've had that sometimes where you order something that's way smaller than you anticipate, and you're like, ah, this isn't going to work. Let's, yeah, no. Uh, oh, these are good. This yeah. is kind of fun. Uh, as a kid, I would send film sure. cartridges in the mail to be developed, and when the envelope would arrive, now that was memorable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Kids have no idea. Kids have I didn't no know idea. you could do that by mail. That's interesting. interesting yeah. Yeah. Mary Beth, several years ago, a friend sent me a bracelet as a late birthday gift. Something about being strong. I received it a day or two after she lost her house in a oh. tornado. Obviously pre-ordered. Oh. Wow. Uh, maybe it was one of those uh, live strong bracelets. Oh, I, you know, I wonder if it was. I don't know. I kind of want to go back to Elle's comment and re feel like, if, can you like set this up that you have someone in your life that has all these packages ready to go and then when you die they get the green light and they have yeah there's something kind of neat about that that like all these people would get packages from you post the grave post the grave <laughs> Oh, here's a good one. I got a letter from yeah. Madeline Langle when I was in fifth grade after I wrote her to say thank you for writing Wrinkle in Time. Inspired my love of reading. Aww. Oh, that is, that's rad. That's pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. Um, that reminds me, you, huh. I got a nice little letter from Drew Struzan, thanks to you. He's yeah. my one of my heroes, the uh, poster, movie poster illustrator, and Kim sent him some sort of a... Yeah. Thing and he sent back some cool stuff and a little. Personal, I feel like I may have just emailed note. them when email was kind of new and it was probably like 1998 or something. 
And uh, I just said if what a big fan my boyfriend was. And he sent like a neat CD with like pictures with and stuff. With his artwork on it, yeah. Signature. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm sure many of you would know his artwork from Star Wars. If you've ever seen Back to the Future, Indiana Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones uh, other obscure movies such as that, we <laughs> did the art for those. Uh, L says... Okay, I more love of this story. Getting my whimsy oh. society uh, boxes and all the secret snail mail that Rachel Crimmins oh. sets up. Yeah, we, yeah. We were always doing kind of fun things with the members. Uh, Erica, fake dog poop. Oh. I love your uncle. That's awesome. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Honestly, plain joke. Just to it double re- check it was fake. It right? reminds me of our brother in law, Gene, and the pranks him and his friends from college would do, they would send some really interesting things to each other. Yeah. yeah, let's talk <laughs> about that. Uh, here is a blast from the past. The Columbia House. 12 cassettes for a penny. Whoa. Or the CDs. Remember that? I yes. was, I did that for a little bit. We did. And oh. they'd come in the mail. You'd be so excited. So glorious. What about Netflix? Would that come in the mail? Yeah, the early Netflix right? came in the mail. Yeah. We never subscribed at the time, but I know some people did. Jody wrote a letter to her favorite author in eighth grade, and he sent me a big package in the mail. How cool is that? That's That's pretty sweet. Well, we've got some good ones. There's a lot here. Um, I think the post office (laughs) is getting some more business. Pepsi sent me a 24-pack for free because I was a Coke drinker. (laughs) That's, yeah. Let's, maybe if you just email them and tell them you drink Coke, will they send you some? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I need some Sierra Mist. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or whatever the equivalent. Mellow yellow. Uh, that's good. Oh, there's some good ones oh, here. Man, I'm going to go back could, and read these. We could just like camp out here for the night, guys. Thank you for uh, sharing so much. Let's see if there's a, a name I haven't pulled up yet. What's this one? Uh-oh. $1,500 rebate check that we received from Menards and found out three weeks later by mail that was not ours. Oh. I don't think we heard the end of that story because I think we heard that it might have been there. No, I heard the end. Did you? I didn't hear the end of that. Well, ah, what a bummer. Oh, yeah. You were already spending it in your head. You're like, ooh, I can finally get that thing. Uh, Good stuff, you guys. Thank you for playing along with us uh, and sharing those. We will pick a winner. Time life. Uh, What did did Kim have here? Received a booklet from Del Monte, where my dad worked. Had to read it in the mirror. Oh, Oh, that's pretty rad. Backwards. That's cool. That's neat. Good stuff, you guys. Well, thank you for for playing with us. Um, Again, one last reminder. The Escape It All Hood Summit is set August 1st and 2nd of this year in Park City, Utah, just outside Park City, technically. Mm -hmm. Uh, We hope you can join us. Uh, Tickets will go on sale officially this Sunday. Be sure that you are an insider. Subscribe at escapeitallhood.com to make sure you get alerted when tickets finally do go on sale. And if you are a Wonder and Whimsy Society member or a uh, uh, Escape It All Hood alumni, uh, Summit alumni, you may be getting something sooner than that a little bit of a head start but probably within the next 15 or 20 minutes the new page will go up with the new photos and some of the new details so if you're interested in learning more check that out in a little bit at escapeitallhoodsummit.com um but that is well one more oh yeah one more little thing this is very just one of those um kind of cool opportunities that came up um and i know i told kim yesterday when we were talking but um (laughs) So Cancer Treatment Centers of America, very awesome, amazing hospital that we love, um, beloved in our family due to the care that they've given our family members over the years. Um, But they have invited Jason and I to put on some virtual programs. We're in the middle of a series, a four part series. And tomorrow, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time, we are going to be doing part two of our four part series and they're opening it up to like anyone. So if you're interested in coming over um, on, it's a Zoom, you know, you don't have to put your camera on, by the way. Um, but if you want to see what we're up to and just, you know, get some encouragement tomorrow, uh, six o'clock central time, the the information is in our Facebook feed. So you're already here on Facebook, but after the show, if you just go back to the feed on the Escape Adulthood page, scroll down a little bit, there'll be the dog that's running out of the gate, uh, artwork, open gate. Um, and you can get some more information there. Um, but it should be pretty cool. We're having a lot of fun with it. We had a nice turnout mm-hmm. last time. We're excited to keep encouraging mm-hmm. not only cancer fighters, but those who support 
cancer fighters um, and just people who are just looking to encourage others. So it's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, Jenna just put a link in the uh, comments Sweet. there. So that's good. And next week we have a special guest. We have an interview with Jeff Harry. And uh, Jeff is, uh, we are kindred spirits. Uh, we, he is all about rediscovering your play. He wears a bow tie that's made of Legos. And uh, he is all about creating safe spaces for play to give people permission to bring their inner child back. I don't know. Do you know anyone? Anyone like that? Um, but uh, How did we just meet him? I have no idea. I, I know. No idea. <laughs> but we're so excited to talk to him. So be sure to tune in next week because it is going to be an epic interview. Um, but as far as this week, that is it for this show. Until next time, Adultitis Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome. Oh,